St. Brendan's, Marymount College, two of the powerhouses of confraternity over many, many years. They come together now here on day four, confraternity 2023. Michael Crusher joins me in commentary. Good afternoon to you, Michael. A little bit warmer than the last time I met you, but uh, lots happened since uh, the last time I saw you. It has. It's getting warmer as the day goes on, which is a bit odd, but this should be a fantastic semi-final. Marymount College, Burley Waters, looking for its first ever appearance in a Confro Shield final, and St. Brendan's looking to go back to the finals to claim another one. They've been the most successful team in Confro history, St. Brendan's. Their 41st carnival. This is a 27th carnival of Marymount College, Burley Waters, and two teams coached by former veteran NRL backs. Marymount College coached by Matt Geyer, St. Brendan's College Apoon coached by Scott Minto. Our referee is Will Batchelor. And the siren is gone, and Marymount will kick off from right to left. From the southern end here at the Runcorn playing fields of St. Lawrence's College. This is going to be an absolute ripper. Both sides of it deserve to progress to the final. They have and coming up against each other for the first time. Obviously, a lot of video done yesterday by both of these coaches just to come up to speed on what these different teams do you're going to hear a bunch of names in here that you think are familiar you're right if you do that keep note of the Marymount team Philip Coates Jersey Ford brother of Xavier Coates we have Cooper By son of Marcus By the former PNG and Melbourne Storm great Oscar LaFranchi Anthony LaFranchi's son the former Blues origin forward and if we go to the St. Brendan's team Braylon Marsh if you think he looks like PJ Marsh it is it's his son Braylon Marsh at number nine. Number 18, Carter Ford, is the son of former Origin player Carl Webb. All reports say uh, did an outstanding job on Tuesday night. Carl Webb, great to see him. Apparently he just got out had a, he had a fall the day before and man, he said, I'm going. Turns up. He did. What he, a man. He was a guest speaker yeah. speaking about his uh, motor neuron disease yep. battle, inspirational stuff. and. You know, there's a lot happened on the field in this confray, but off the field, that was uh, a remarkable moment as Marymount get the first penalty of this 25-minute halves in this game. Look here, I think, for particularly the speed in the outside backs of, of St. Brendan's and uh, Marymount with their options, the likes of Cooper By, Philip Coates as Cooper By hits the ball up there, and that headgear, you can't miss it. So this should be a really good match. Just quickly, the host side, St. Laurie's, great win there couple of games ago against uh, Southern Cross. So that'll make Chris Ledbetter pretty happy. Yeah, big day tomorrow coming up. Finals day for the boys tomorrow. We've had the girls final already, so this is getting to the pointy end of the week. Luke White finds a back row and damn row. Dummy half his shoes. Finds Smith. Smith straightens the play here, draws a couple of defenders, takes the tackle there of Braylon Marsh. Good quick play the ball. Luke White puts it aerial. Chases come through. Takes it low. What a lovely fly over the corner there from the from the winger for St. Brendan's. Yeah, we saw last year St. Brendan's. They missed the final last year. They lost a semi-final to Ignatius Park College in Mackay. It was an epic semi-final. Trying to keep it alive here, but only in their end zone here. This is dangerous stuff here, St. Brendan's. Probably not ideal. Touched and uh, touched there, so there's six to go. But probably not surprising that they will look to try and use that speed on their outside backs. This early, though, Michael. Following games yeah, trying to back for themselves moment. as we see a replay here as they do field scoot one, across field Brendan looking for a, uh, a gap in that in that Marymount defensive line. And just that ball on touched there. and. Two. St. Patrick oh, sure. Pines yeah. are playing Mayus Yeah, just look, looking for a gap in that line there. The, for the, some of these players to watch for St. Brendan's as well, we've got Banjo Walker, who's one of the several players back from last year, the fullback who was just down there. He's from Clermont, the Clermont product, Banjo Walker, one of uh, five players back from Contro 22 for St. Brendan's. So St. Brendan's still trying to get out of their own end here. It's all been left to screen. Oh, you, only four minutes gone so far. Marymount College. From Burley. So two ends of the state to a degree. Both like the water. 
Both Spinning a turn and tackle. Very pleasant places too. And they, yeah. If you're watching on our Facebook uh, stream at the moment, if you're watching that, let us know where you're watching from. People watching from all over the place. Overheart. Gets over halfway. Takes a tackle there by Zach Hughes. Marsh. Puts a kick over the top. The wing is up here, so the fullback has to come in. And Hanley Smith allows that to bounce. But there's a one, two, three, four, five, six... St. Brendan's plays in that line. 11 metres out from the own trial on their Merry Mount. Let's see how they go defensively, St. Brendan's. Good hit there underneath the shoulders of Brunker. Not really sure who was supposed to take that at dummy half. He was a little bit dis disjointed here, but it's going to be Coates who had, had the foot. He scored a great try here on day one. He hit the ball with patience, I recall, and crashed. They were pretty much untouched. Coat, so he's a handful. And then he and then was got this guy. Cooper By, that's exactly right. With that headgear we've come to see the last few days, runs with intent, really goes to the line. Well, both sides of the ruck out wide, they've got some firepower, haven't they, St. Um, Mary Mount? And Coates and By. They have. It'll be really good to watch the tactics of both of these teams as we see the first change for St. Brendan's at the moment. We mentioned there's that unlimited interchange. Both of these squads have their full 21 okay. players to choose from. They're all still uh, fit enough to play here on uh, this semi-final day, so watch for the rotation by the coaches. Marymount thought they were down to 19 players. They've got two back who've recovered from injuries. They thought they put them out for the week, and that's a massive help in their rotations. Carl Ford, you're looking for a little bit of over halfway. Tea. There's plenty of food, drinks up at the canteen. Well, Frankie, over the one of those tacklers. On the east side of field one. Simon Green. Whilst you're over there, you might Nothing fancy so far from St. Brendan's. Just want to get to their kick. It's a terrible pass. He's tidy up there by Melrose. He puts an aerial midfield bomb. Taken in the end there. Just trying to make out who the player was. He wasn't supposed to get it, but it was a great takeover. His right shoulder into the sun. Yeah, Philip Coates got it there. Got a nice little uh, a pre, uh, pre take bump too there. Just to put him off, but he managed to do it very well. Hines the tackler. Good numbers, it's compressed defence here from St. Brendan's Louse, pace out wide, show on the sideline, just gets knocked off balance, still keeps going in the end there, there's Jordan Ryan, he was showing the sideline, he said thank you very much, he made every post a winner. This player here, Cody Young, he was outstanding I thought the other day, never gave up, not a lot of height, but great body height to actually get some uh, metres, as is this man here, is Oscar LaFranchi, last tackle on the 30 metre line. Allen. He's going to be stuck with the footy, unfortunately. It's Cooper by. I don't know whether it was a breakdown there or he just decided to. He thought he had a chance to get through. Really interesting in that set, too. Jordan Ryan, you called him making that bust down the left hand side as a winger. As soon as he made that bust, he got up and ran out and yeah. put himself in the right-hand side back line there, which is very interesting play. Whether Marymount's going to really try and test St. Brendan's on the edges here, uh, if there's a compressed defence, whether they're going to try and see what they can do with that compressed defence. Uh, but that was a very interesting play there from the left winger running around to the right there for the back end of that set. Keep the footy alive here. And Marcy, the other thing was the pedlo was in the back line there, the hooker trying to get that good left-right pass motion. Looks so like can... Your number nine is a lot better at than your most players at this age. So Mary Mount run it out. Good chase there. Around the shoulders goes Tyrell. Here he is again. It's Jordan Ryan. Got to be disciplined here. Discipline's a word. How many times do we see a late in the tackle count or a leaving penalty for the attack and slide out from their own end? They have to be smart here. Here he is again, this man. He's been outstanding, Cody Young. Good quick play the ball, too, from the, the 18. By. Throws that to nobody. Goes into touch. So, poor old Cooper By. Not having a great start to this game. No, it's a little, uh, a little bobble before. And uh, on the replay here, we see him just with that pass. Just floated over. Harbour Bridge style over the top, but we know how damaging he's been for Marymount in this carnival so far. So look for him to rebound as he gets in there to do some work on the first hit up. Yeah, you don't normally pass the ball if you're scoring trials at the top. Do you? <laughs> but it, I said that before about the hooker being in the back line because they know how to pass left to right. Keep it by just having trouble with his left to right pass there. And it just floated 
into no man's space. Well, wow, that's going to hurt. Deep in the tackle count here. Well, I won't kick for touch, but I'll throw a big body at the line here. Overheart wants to have a crack. It's quite hit at a pace here. Bit of a reasonable target there for Young. Catch and pass. An opportunity for the lock forward to go over the line there. And Simon Green denied. Hands out in front. Pass wasn't the greatest. Had to take it over his head then, Tommy Green. Backline set here for St. Brendan's, but it's not a great pass. Doesn't matter. He's going to go over and score the try on his own. It is Carter Ford. Carter Ford, first points of the game. We mentioned <laughs> Carter everybody. Ford earlier among some of the well-known players, related Holy players. Spirit it wasn't the greatest College pass. He managed to get it and just barge his way through the son of former origin forward Carl Webb puts the point first points on the board I wonder sometimes too John when you get those passes that sort of loop out from dummy half as a defensive team you sort of prop you're moving forward they prop to see who takes it sometimes it can put you a little bit out of sync but great effort there by Ford to grab it and get the first points in this game a really good start for St. Brendan's and also there's the other uh, side of the coin where you have that ball above your head and you you've got your ribs exposed. You do. You're a bit of a target there, but uh, at the end of the day, you want to try and stop it across the line. But it's uh, 4 0. But is on the eastern side yeah, it all comes down to that error that the pass by Cooper By that goes into touch. And they come up with a footy in good field position, did some Brendan's. And yeah, off the back of the pen penalty midfield, following that as well, they could reset there and. They are look, looking good with play the ball speed at the moment, St. Brendan's. They're in attack. Three and four. They're getting there that speed to work for them. Then, located on the western side of field three. So take his time so to try and convert this because points are a premium. Do you tend to see the goal kicking at this level is pretty much spot on? If you look at the replay here, he has to reach high. Unless he jumps up and takes it in the, like a full forward, really, didn't he? You can just see, in, as he sort of jumped up, you could see Cody Young from Merriman sort of just prop and mm. just wait to see what happened. Everyone reset, and Ford was good enough to get over. Pedlo gets us back underway. Hits the try line. Oh, big contact. What a one. The words of Stan Pilecki, there's nothing better than the sound of crushing bone underfoot. And comes up with an error. Good defence here from Marymount College and St. Brendan's now. They're after points. Could be a bit of strife here. This is great field position. 25 metres out. Have a look at this. This is heavy contact, Michael Crutcher. Boom. Yeah, spirited start here from this set from Marymount. And now talk about being a coach, Scott Minto there this time wanting to get that good set after the try. Matt Geyer, his former NRL opponent, wanting to put some pressure on. We'll see what Mary Matt can do. Jai Watt with that hit. Outstanding. Half a gap gets the offload. Does he get a hand it? Regardless, it's play on. It's with Jordan Ryan. Yep, six to go here from that touch. Allen. Damro. Cut down. Good one there from Blake Field. 12 out from the line. Here he's that man, Watton again. Who forced the error. Gets it within eight. Dummy half is slow to get there. And Allen, ball back inside here. It goes behind him. He comes up with an error. And that'll be a play on, says the referee. This is no advantage. But there isn't. So Connor Hines will take it 10 metres out. Yeah, looking promising there from Miriam. It's that little switch of play. The ball doesn't go to hand. So good confidence boosted for St. Brendan's defending their own line. Oh. So Jai Watney puts a whopping big shot on. He's now been penalised for being offside. And St. Brendan's will find a great touch finder. Takes him five metres inside. Mary Mount's half. Weivel. Going backwards to go forward. Then he turns around. Weivel's 
drives across the 30 middle on still going as Weibel. Oh, I guess within 20. Weibel Coyote. Wow, good run. Green gets a shot. Big one underneath the ridge by Tobin. Marsh dummy half. They go to the left hand side here. Taking the line there is Melrose. He gets the offload. They get up and play it eventually will Weibel. Dangerous times here, Simon Green. No way through there for Braylon Marsh. Is that man Young involved in the tackle there? Ball out the back, catch and pass. Coach gives it off. It goes into touch. So some Brendan's just being a bit... Uh, too heavy with the pass. Yeah, just said execution close to the line for both teams. I think they'll probably want to look at that as we see the ball just double pump there and the defensive pressure from Marymount enough to impact that attack from St. Brendan's. Isaiah Walters, he thought he had himself a confro semi-final try. Finally, it doesn't make the mark, so Marymount need to work it out inside the final 10 minutes of this First half. Is it valuable Coates. meters from that combination of by and Coates out on that right hand side? And now LaFranchi. No respect given to LaFranchi, driven back. Good one, Blake Field. Solid contact, the two 13s coming together. Pressure on the kicker. Allowed to bounce, finally gets it to Zakiba. And Akiba will take the tackle, but made sure of it in the end. As we mentioned before, if you're watching on Facebook, let us know where you're watching from. Yeah, we've got some comments. People watching Singapore, Whoa. Port Moresby, Dolby, and of course Rockhampton. Plenty of people watching uh, in Rocky Safe. Thanks for the messages. Keep sending those and where you're watching from. We've got a poll up now on, on Facebook as well. Tell us which team you're supporting in this semi-final, Marymount or St. Brendan's. It's a Pierce. Pierce turns the ball inside now to Marsh. Marsh looking for an offload. Bounces out of one tackle. Finally pulled down there by Bai. Set of the park. The 20 metres out. Last tackle. Puts a grubber kick in here. And it's going to be diffused there by Coates. A lovely bust through the middle there that really had Merriman on the back foot with Braylon Marsh coming through off the offload. Tommy Green's kick just going to Philip Coates there. But again, you can see that compressed defence already here. And here we go to look for Merriman to go to the outside of that. Merriman there. Arson running out from Roman again. And the referee, Will Batchelor, is going to help him with that. Yeah, just a bit of pressure on the neck in that tackle. So, good chance here for Marymount to get down the other end. About eight minutes to go in this half. It's not going to go out, that ball. It's not going to go out at all. That's a terrible kick. I don't mind, I mean, don't mind me saying so, but wow. And that's the, uh, the challenge of this breeze here. It's been a tricky breeze all week. That was Tabua Bon. Now yeah, the centre three quarter and Rydal Tyrrell. Green. Probably not the biggest front rower there, but Brunker gets the offload. Ford. Oh, they're looking dangerous in the middle of the park here at St. Brendan's. Pierce. Oh, so close is Pierce. Marsh to Green charging onto it and try scoring tie for Harvey Mahoney good support play here from St. Brendan's yeah really good support play and some of that run through the middle as well from St. Brendan's as we have a look at that replay coming from the middle of the field out to the left Tommy Green lovely line oh, and pass yeah. for Harvey Mahoney it's just some interesting work through the middle there. We've seen a couple of really good runs through the middle. Jake Pierce and the number eight for St. Brendan's, Diesel Brunker. Now, he'd be one of the smaller front rowers yeah. in this competition, but by G's got some skill about him. 
and some uh, and some punch in the middle too. You don't often see props of that size with such a presence on the field, but he does have that. He's got the headgear on, and they've got pace out wide. St. Brendan's, there's no doubt about that, but they've also got that good middle there with Braylon Marsh, of course, as a dummy half that can drive them. So two tries up, six minutes to go in this half, and comes into Marymount to get field position and possession here. They've not really had many chances at the other end in, the, in the recent times and they'll have to get themselves back down there. The easiest conversions for Tyler Melrose, but they just seem to have a little bit more energy in the centre, don't they, St. Brendan's? You throw in Jack Pierce. It's also in the Carter Ford. Devastating. The strikes are not too bad. Oh, over it goes. So 12 points to nil. Five minutes remaining first half. There's that replay again we see where it goes out through Marsh to Green with the lovely just fake and then offload for the try down that left-hand side. So Brendan's yet to lose a game this week. They've come into these semi-finals with a perfect record so far, four from four. And this is when we really start to get an idea of the teams that can really challenge for this Confraternity Shield. A lot of people around here who've been to many, many carnivals saying it's the most open confro that we've seen for years. Ignatius Park College going for three in a row didn't make the final eight this year. So a lot of people reassessing now to wonder, well, what have we got here as we get an offload again? from Brunker, so this will tell us a lot this afternoon. Connor Hines gets over halfway. Plenty lining up here, and this man, Diesel Brunker, as you said, Michael Crutcher, not a big man, but he's like a fired out of the cannon. Market defence is a disarray here from Marymount, so taken full advantage by Marsh. Now it's the last 25 metres out from the try line. Bodies in motion now to the left-hand side. It goes with Melrose, and Melrose gives it off to Tam White. And it all comes unstuck right at the end there. But changeover and Marymount. Again, we're staying on the right-hand side of the field. Michael Crutch has been all... All... St. Brendan's. Yeah, this is where they've had a lot of footy. They have. They've had the, the footy and they've had the positions. And Marymount has to get their way out of here. And with three and a half minutes to go till halftime, I'm sure they would love a try. We know how these games can turn around. Ooh... Dangerous Sewell. I thought he was through then. Well, he gets a penalty. Just as good. Yeah, just caused that little gap. Caused don't, kick, don't kick for touch. Yeah. Don't kick for touch. <laughs> just caused uh, just take the Brendan's to try and reassess. And that one's going to come straight in here. John he Devine. Just. Just on his feet. That looked like it was going to come in here. But that's how strong that breeze, breeze is. I because behind us there are trees. And it goes a little bit higher. Tends to push it back in. Off the boot, that was coming straight yeah. here and ended up being about 10 metres short. So there is a, a breeze on this side. There's no doubt about that. Marymount finally find their way inside St. Brendan's Park, side of the park. The last time they were was because of this man, Watton, who put a shot on. Coughed up possession, but unfortunately had a penalty because of him staying inside the 10. So here's Jordan Ryan. Long floating ball out here. I'll tell you what. Max Galea out there is wondering, what am I, 25 foot tall? Why are these passes either above or behind or in front of me? Again, we had the left winger there over on the right-hand side. So he's coming back now to the left-hand side, Jordan Ryan. So Merriman not afraid to chance their arm here to see if they can get away through. Well, Frank was just obviously trying to create that extra man, aren't they? But they're running out of grass. It's all well and good to have the numbers. The Smith juggles it. Still going to Smith. Goes back the other way. Gets away from two or three. But finally, he's going to be... Well, no, he's not. Still going as Smith. Ah, oh, still going as Smith. Spiders all over him. Last tackle. Ten out from the try line. Grub a kick into the end. Goal. There are short in goals. Doesn't make it. Seven tackle restart on the 20. Yeah, they had numbers out to the right, but they went left. It wasn't a bad option, too. That kick was just a fraction shorter, but good effort there. Hadley Smith, player of the carnival on the Titans. Uh, schools comp for Marymount. He comes in good form along with Ryder Damro. 
that was a much more enterprising set with a, just over a minute to go in this half, but enough for Merriment to take confidence if they can repel this set from yeah. Brendan's. Where did that 24 minutes go? Yeah. <laughs> oh, smokes. Harrison Hill. It's got mobile, a mobile pack of some Brendan's. And a fearless one, led by this man here for Diesel Brunker. Pass shouldn't been made. That'll be a knock-on and a scrum. They should get it packed. Yeah, 50 seconds remaining here and see if they can get it packed. No time off, of course, so it doesn't matter if Merriman packs it. That won't uh, particularly matter to stop a clock. See other, uh, other semi-finals. Yeah, another semi-final on at the moment. We'll check that score between Emmaus Rockhampton and St. Pat's McCoy. We'll bring you that score after halftime. Here we go. Kicking on the chance that they might get some points here before halftime here. Has to be tight. No, doesn't get tidied up. Knock on by everybody except you and I, Michael Crutcher, and that will be halftime. There's no way I'll pack this scrum in time, and that is halftime. 12 points to nil in favour of St. Brendan's. As we look at... Both squads coming off. Yeah, really good first half. There was Up promise there yeah. for Philip Coates with that kick through. He was making ground quickly, but uh, May needed a bit more length in that kick to really put his full sprint on. But we've got a really interesting second half coming up as we see the highlights of the first half. This was the first try, just that ball that looped. And Carter Ford with strength like his father, Carl Webb, crashes over and he enjoyed it. And why wouldn't he? And then... To the left-hand side here, Tommy Green holds the ball up for a very good pass to Harvey Marnie. So 12 points to nil for St. Brendan's. Big half coming up here. Marymount trying to make their first ever Confro final. St. Brendan's trying to get to the final to win their first one since 2015. They're 13 times winners, so lots to look A little bit of time here, Michael Crutcher. As you mentioned, we're running a little bit late because of the uh, injury in the... Uh, in the final for the girls. Um, let's go through the result in that one. Yeah, we left people uh, in suspense as we moved over to field two to finish that game while Harmony Fayoud from Cathedral College was attended to uh, on this field. And we went over, we left here and we had uh, TCC leading 10 0. And over on field two, it was soon 10 all. St. Pat's Mackay Mac scored two tries. It then came down to a defensive finish, three sets in a row were repelled by uh, TCC uh, with St. Pat's deep in their territory. They got the ball back, they went to the other end and a try, 14-10, and that would be the winning try. So the Cathedral College Rockhampton with its first ever confraternity shield in the girls or the boys, they win it 14-10. And some great scenes afterwards, Harmony Fayoud, who you saw, had a serious leg injury. Her teammates ran over to her where she was receiving attention just out the back of an ambulance. And they went over and celebrated with her and uh, sang the team song with her. So, wow. And Harmony was then chosen in the Confraternity Girls Merit Team along with some of her teammates, including Katie Tanner, the player of the Carnival for TCC. So big win for them as your second half gets underway. Now, the winner of this match will play the winner of a current game on field two, which is Emmaus Rockhampton versus St. Pat's Mackay. The second half is starting right now on that field. And over there, Emmaus Rockhampton 4 leads Pats Mackay 0. So as you'd expect, the nail bite up. 12 0 here in favour of St. Brendan's Yapoon. Marymount College as Michael Crutch are looking to find their way into the final for the first time. Got a bit of work to do. They have a bit of work to do. They're, they're, they're so well coached. Matt Geyer and his team get so much out of this uh, squad. They're a squad that's a courageous squad. The only team from Southern Queensland in this final four, and they're representing their region really well. And we'll look to see what they can do with their strike players in this half. Joy Watton. Good back row up. It's not the last. That's going to be play on. Play on. On the way to the try line. Turns the backside. No. Harvey Mahoney. Oh, no. Call it back for... Is it not sure? Is a call from the touch judge on the far Say side. they're inside the 10. Touch judge on the far side has called that straight away. He didn't move that touch judge. He stood there. Let's have a look at the replay. He's going to say the 21 was offside. Yeah, coming through too quickly there. So... Oh. Try to score Harvey Mahoney. 
Yes, Harvey Mahoney did well to pick that ball up. He really, uh, really rushed the Marymount <laughs> attack there. We almost lost our heads up here. Tell you what, just looking at the coach from uh, St. Brendan's, he's not a happy camper. It's about to get worse for him because that's a penalty on the 40. Yeah, it's a high quality of uh, football. We've spoken about uh, St. Brendan's, two of their Contro old boys in the current Origin squad, of course, Harry Grant and Ben Hunt. Both played Contro, both with this fantastic green and gold jersey on. So there's been a great production line over the years as a try is disallowed on the other field with uh, a Mayo Shockhampton going over and to have it disallowed. Well, that's deja vu from both sides. We'll come back to it because we've got people from all around the world will come back to some of those other viewers as we see Damro it's Watton again quick play the ball sweep play to the right hand side short ball Not quite ready for it there was Cooper by no, waiting for him he had half of the Brendan's team on his back yep. there it seemed now it's the last goes behind has to tidy it up and little Frankie and that's going to be a changeover so Brendan's will run at 90 metres. So where else have we got viewers? We talked about Singapore before. Yeah, so the viewers on Facebook, thanks for letting us know where you're watching from. Bundaberg, Early Beach, Bali, Yapoon, of course. Uh, and a Brendan's old boy from 15 years ago, I say, named Ben. I don't know if it's Ben Hunt or not, but there's uh, Brendan's old boys watching. I'm sure there's some Marymount old boys as well watching this game at the moment people from all over the world watching on the live stream live here from the playing fields of St Lawrence's College who've done a wonderful job here to accommodate 5,000 teams it seems well in actual fact it's what is it 64 all up men and women yes 52 boys teams 12 girls teams and they've done a great job with this carnival of course finals day tomorrow but so far it's gone off very well the lost property readout every day is a mother's nightmare as it comes across the uh, loudspeaker so if you got any mums listening at home if you can hear the loudspeaker for the lost property in the background cover your ears it's not a pretty sound <laughs> there's been a lot of uh, lost property children but that haven't been claimed <laughs> The biggest and they're one. about 17 years old. <laughs> the biggest one is the mouth guards. The mouth oh, guards yuck. in the shorts, in uh, in the socks, in well, the laundry. She's all right. You can have them. Well, something needs to be melted down. And that's going to be an error. That penalty. He's been a real handful in this match so far. The Merriman fullback, Hadley Smith. He's been... He had. We mentioned he had a really good carnival, the Titans Cup. And today, he's been really busy for Mary Mount causing some concerns for the Brendan's defence and just through his his work ethic there and his speed he got that penalty so Brendan's a rattle since that try was disallowed they're just coughing up errors left right and centre I need to get refocused here sure they lead but you know one league try and they get always oh, lost that footy he did lose that yeah so here's a chance here there for so Brendan's to right themselves that the Mary Mount well, we've got less than 20 minutes to go here, so it's plenty of time, but they need to score next. Yeah, like the enterprise of uh, Marymount, they're not afraid to spread that ball early. Just a good good shot there, forcing that ball loose. But I think we can expect to see some of that shifting of the ball, trying to find a way around St. Brendan's at the moment, but they get a scrum here, not a bad position. The shove from Marymount... Here he is again. Sorry, mate, Mahoney. He's already got one try. Second one disallowed. Hadley Smith brought him down now, trying to get back into his fullback position. Marsh. Finds a diminutive Brunker. Watt and grabs him. I was yep. going to say, Watt and Brunker seem to love contact as much as anyone on that field right now. It's just crazy. Out of the better, though, it seems to be. The Brunker coming off for a rest, and he deserves it. Green. Here he is again. Mahoney! Great tackle. A super shot there coming from Philip Coates. Coughs up the footy, and that diffuses the onslaught from St. Brendan's. Yeah, we said earlier this week, Philip Coates was chosen, as we see the replay. Watch him coming up here on one of the biggest men in the Brendan's team, who had to keep his eyes on the ball. Coates was picked last year in the Confro merit team in year 10 it takes a lot 
to uh, remember players who've been picked in the merit team in year 10. He was one of them, and he's played well again this year, and you can see the size. Just think what he's going to be like in year 12 when he gets here. Chanel College will take on Good Shepherd after this game at 3.47. We're still 4-0 on the second field. Emmaus College, Rockhampton still leading St. Pat's Mackay in what is proving look to be out, a good look game. Look out, look out. Get out of my way. Good carry there. I think he's been, been asked some questions by his coach, Young, now. Good carry, hits that ball on the advantage line, gets within five of the halfway line. What? That might be quite in ring. Not the last. They put it in the sky. Coates comes through. Taken easy as you like waters. Not a lot of pressure here. He had all the time in the world. Kick not quite on its mark. I'd still rather him than me taking that totally. ball with uh, Philip Coates coming through on speed. It's all yours, mate. He's he got did. himself a try there. He did well. Good chase from Marymount. It's a good sign to see them chasing that ball like that. We've still got 17 minutes to go in this game. The two tries down, but we know that can change. Blake Field with a good carry. As with Carter Ford over halfway. Now Blake Field again. Kyden Ring with a tackle. Tommy Green. Gets the offload to the back row there and Wyville. Wyville stepping out. Wyville still going. Still going as Wyville. Gets the offload, does he? No, it's going to be knocked on. It's going to be the changeover on the last. Enterprising stuff for the 12. How did he get out of those tackles? He seemed to be wrapped up and I was thinking there's a last tackle option that won't go too far. And he almost turned it into a try. A fabulous run. Just kept pumping his legs. Have a look at that in your bottom corner of the replay of that. Look at that. I've been to some radios where they've had the greasy pig competition. You had to go out there and try and grab the greasy pig, and that's exactly what he was like. Nobody could pull him down. Mind you, though, those people who ended up pull that pig down probably shouldn't be allowed out in public. So Marymount. Good contact on Kite and Ring. Blake Field. There's a 16, 17 and 18 out there for St. Brendan's and the three replacement players have been devastating there in their defence. Now it's the last, that's the 40, goes behind, still the last tackle. He's going to have to get away with it, that's going to be a changeover, 28 metres out from the try line. Yeah, that's a good result for St. Brendan's from that option for Marymount. This is real pressure here now, 15 minutes exactly to go here and Brendan's with the ball. 15 metres out. A shout out to the St. Brendan's Old Boys Foundation Facebook page. They're uh, watching. A lot of uh, people from other parts of the world. Shout out to someone from Los Angeles watching at the moment as well. So great to have everyone on board for this semi final. Well, that's about midnight over there. So well done, St. Brendan's now. They, they score here, and Mary Mountain might be a bridge too far. Oh, he's got close. Simon Green was on his way to the try line and great cover defence, or sorry, online defence here, but they're not going to stop this guy, are they? Yes, Mary Mountain stepping up. Last tackle now. So Brendan's loses the footy changeover. Well, great defence from St. Brendan's there because Carter Ford took that ball and you thought for all money he was going to cross that line. And Brent, uh, Mary Mount get him to ground and then he's on his back. He can't get the quick play of the ball because they had a big overlap out on the short left side. But Marymount are able to... Well, we, we talk about Coates' attacking ability. That was him who put the shot on there along with the, one of his teammates. So he's able to... Uh, and earlier in that set as well. Stuff. Yes, Co correct. Co Cooper Bai had put on a, a big shot as well. So a couple of errors from Bai early in the game, but you know he's, he's valuable at both ends of the field. Mary Mount, I need to start asking questions of St. Brendan's. Find a way through this green and gold wall. LaFranchi doing his bit. He's only, he's only one. It's not the last. Good carry, and he runs towards the guys offside. 
Richard. We already spoke to Mark Savage, part of the referees, why you can't take a quick tap. You can't take a quick tap if you're inside the tent. Yeah, Jimmy Pedlow, they're showing that he's got plenty of energy left here too when Marymount needs him the most with uh, 13 minutes to go. That was a good effort to get that penalty and give them the field position here. Good carry, Kyden Ring. This is only the second tackle. Need to hang on the footy here is Trey Tobin. They're back out to the edges straight away. Correct. Marymount looking to go around there if they can. Young. Go to Young. Just keeps getting... I just love the way he gets quick play the ball. Pedlow. Ten out from the try line. Marymount yet to score in this semi-final. Confro 2023. Long ball out. Chance for a try in the corner. Marymount have got one. Finally, they score in the top right-hand corner. Yeah, that's what they've been trying to do for some time. We knew that they were trying to shift that ball and shift it quickly. And this time, they get the right passes. It's timed really well. Here's this ball here. Just timed enough. A bit high, but out in front, which gave the opportunity for the short pass to Kai Allen to score in that left corner. Good effort from... Marymount, they got the ball off the back of that penalty, worked themselves down there and that shift, it's happened multiple times that this time they get over the line, so 12 minutes to go, over on the other field it's still 4-0 to Emmaus with the same time to go, we're playing off the same mm. hooter here, so we're getting down to the ends of two games, it could go right through to the uh, final siren. The advantage though is that so Brendan scored their tries close to the post. And they've converted both of those. This is a little harder assignment for Merriman goal kicker. 11 minutes still remaining. Another left hand kicker. Left foot kicker, I should, should say. Probably might have a better chance with his left hand. But anyway. Here's the replay now as we see Smith involved there. And just goes across in front of his men so there's no issue there with obstruction. But the pass from Sewell to White and the try to Allen. Over on the other field, we've just seen a raid from St. Pat's just come unstuck close to the line on the last tackle. So Amaius get the ball 10 metres out from their own line. Check out this return from the kickoff. We've just seen it so many times where a side scores a try and they put it on the f chest of a, a ball runner and they just come like the blazes and boom, in he goes. And that's that man Kaiden Ring. He had an error early in the, his appearance but since then he's been a damaging ball runner for Marymount. Cody Young Just keeps getting up. Look how quickly he gets to play the ball. The referee will say, go back and play it on the mark. Just a little bit too keen as Coda. That just stops the momentum a little bit. Tries to burrow his way through. He's been strong here as Jordan Ryan. Blind side. There's not a lot of turf out here. Goes back the way the footy came. There's Jimmy Pedlow. They didn't make too many metres there. Smith. Puts it on the boot there. There's... Sewell into the sun. Ball still alive. Knocked back, says the referee. And St. Brendan's will run it out 20 metres, 30 metres out from their own trial line. If you heard a roar before, that was because Emmaus Rockhampton just scored over on field two to go up eight points to nil with uh, nine minutes to go. So a really important try. So right now, we've got two teams from Central Queensland leading the race for the finals. A team from Rocky and a team from Yapoon. Rocky and Yapoon. You can walk to Yapoon from Rocky. It's a normal day for you. Well, well if you... Yeah. Cliffy Young. Kick into the sky and... Bounces end over end and into touch. Having a change over there for Marymount. This one isn't over yet, but time is ticking for the Sky Blues. Yeah, well, Marymount will need uh, two tries in the last eight minutes here if they want to be able to win this game. And one would have to be converted or we'll go to Golden Point because there are Golden Point 
provisions in these semi-finals. Well, I think they just need to really show some better prize and maybe go wide up. Coach trying to do his best. Trey Tobin comes back out on the park. Contact there from Pierce. Kicking early. Endo Wren. Oh, just when you're hot, you're hot. That just sits up nicely there for the fullback and Banjo Walker. He'll take the tackle on the 20. They need a good defensive set here. Marymount without giving away a penalty. Shout out to Blackwater and Middlemount. We've got people watching from there as well at the moment. Wow. Blackwater. Look out, getting some rain coming your way. Like everybody else. Looking for a drink. By puts a shot on. Well, I think he had the the option of being a one on one. He was going to attempt the strip there. Melrose puts it on the toe. Taken nicely over the shell there by Kai Allen, the try scorer. Gets to the 30. Taking a while for some of these players from Marymount to get back on side. Well, oh, good defence from Brendan's. They mean business. They want to want to play late on day day four. For Frankie, it's tried hard. Six and a half to go. By Coates wants to have another crack here. There's Cooper By stands on the tackle, held as the referee. Now it's the last. Need to try something a little bit funky. They're going to put for a midfield bomb. Why do you get underneath those Tapua Bond? And that's going to go. Out on the full, so Merrimount just can't take a trick. Yeah, that same breeze that prevented the ball from going out in the first half has carried it over the sideline on that occasion. So 10-0, Amaius had converted from near the sideline with five minutes to go. So what we've got is a an equation here. Merrimount College and St. Pat's Mackay both had to score two tries in the last five and a half minutes to have a chance to rest back this lead. Well, St. Brendan's have got the footy at the moment. They're just inside Marymount territory. Penalty for the markers not being straight. Yeah, good, good hookers know how to uh, Don't they? get those uh, defenders in an offside position. That was a Braylon Marsh did then, so really sets up. Ooh. He sets up Brendan's here just a few metres out from the line. Banjo Walker's put that right in the corner. Tyrrell, the tap restart. Goes himself to Tyrrell. Goes himself, him, Tyrrell scores the match winning try here, and St. Brendan's are on their way to the final. I thought for sure he's going to fire it to Connor Hines, who's waiting the number 11, but he decides to go himself, Michael Crutcher. Have a look at this. Yeah, he's the replay. That we see now from the tap. And that's just pure strength and determination to get the ball over the line. Probably not what Mary Mount was expecting no. either. Your eyes are up. You're looking further afield to see who's the target. On this occasion, it's the man himself who scores. So a big try here in terms of this game. 16 points to four, four minutes to go. This kick here, you would think, would put... Marymount out of reach, needing uh, three tries they would need in that time with three minutes to go. Over on the other field, it's still 10 points to nil to Emmaus over there. So if these scores hold, tomorrow's final will be a cracker. Two teams in Emmaus, Rockhampton and St. Brendan's who had an epic match in the Dolphins Cup recently, won by Emmaus 20 points to 18 with the last minute try. So They've played each other recently. There was nothing really between them then. It took uh, a late try to get that win. So this could be a cracker, but St. Pat's Mackay not out of it yet. And if this goal doesn't go over, Marymount will give everything they've got in these last few minutes. 
looking into the sun. Like I said, there's a good shepherd will take on Chanel College. Yeah, the Mount Isa team against uh, Gladstone. So you see Confraternity Carnival brings schools from all over Queensland together. As we have a look at this replay again. Not what you expect, but the outcome is very good. <laughs> so you think they have to go short here now. And Philip Coates, no, they're going to go long. Hope for an error. And try to pin them down. Look at this for a carry back. Get out of the way. Oh, great ball or tackle there from Ryan. Threw himself at him. Outstanding carry there from Elijah Walker. The runner back into the field of play. They lead by plenty and still brings some energy to the kick restart. Harrison Hill. Pulled down by Watton. Not done yet. That man Walker. Marsh. Finds green. Quick hands. Try in the corner. Tamoy gives it off. And it's going to be finished in the end there by Sam Akiba. And Sam Akiba. Well, it was pretty hard for Marymount to lift. A year the contest has gone. But St. Brendan said, we're not done yet. Look at this sweeping play to the left. Yeah, they just came out to the left here. And they just had the numbers there. Just getting around their men. And it's a nice, see, good hands here to take those and put those down for a try. It's a scoreline now, 20 points to 4. Patch of these, of these game has been much closer than that, but the scoreboard does say 20 to 4 over on the other field. St. Pat's Mackay has scored a try to make it 10 points to 4 over there, but again, they've got a problem that they've got 50 seconds left like there is here. The conversion from the sideline has missed, so we've got 45 seconds left on both fields. St. Brendan's will play in the Confraternity Shield final tomorrow. We know that. Who will they play? We'll know in 30 seconds time because uh, Emmaus Rockhampton are breaking no records in trying to return <laughs> to restart this game. And you can imagine this ball will be kicked very, very deep. The referee's urging them to get back and restart it. 23 seconds left on the clock here at the ground. Still hasn't been restarted. Both of these are about to kick at the same time. Kick off from Emmaus goes. The sideline conversion here goes. Not bad. Gets a conversion. 22 points to four. The six and seven combining here on one side of the field. Seven to six to three. Goes back in field to make sure there's enough space for him to score in the corner. And over he goes. Full time here. So St. Brendan's on their way to the final. Marymount. Gallant, but just not good enough in the end. And a con congratulations to the boys from Yapoon. Yeah, and they'll play Emmaus College Rockhampton tomorrow. They've held on 10 4 against St. Pat's Mackay. So it'll be a cracker tomorrow. Be a good third v fourth playoff tomorrow, too, between Marymount and St. Pat's yeah. Mackay. You know, congratulations to Marymount. Matt Guy has done a great job with his team this week. They've uh, they played really well. They made it through a pool, including Ignatius Park College, to reach the Final Four. The second time they've reached the Final Four in Confray history. They've got a lot to be proud of this week, and we'll see some of these faces back again next year at Confro And St. Brendan's Japoon, a big day for St. Brendan's. They've missed out on finals in recent years. Their last win was 2015. As we said, no team has won more Confraternity Shields than St. Brendan's Yapoon. They get the chance to add to that tomorrow in what will be a fantastic finals game tomorrow. All right, 22 points to four. Quick shout-out to uh, Brent Wright tuning in from Middlemount. So, yeah, thanks for tuning in here. One more game to go here. Thank you, Michael Crutcher. Well done to St. Brendan's there into the final. And we'll see you with another game here in about four minutes' time. Stay tuned.